Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel, Unique Bio Classes, based on NCRT syllabus for PUC, first and second year. If you like my channel, please subscribe, like and share, and hit the bell icon so that you can get notifications as soon as videos are getting uploaded. Okay guys, we shall start with the today's class. In previous video, we have discussed about outbreeding devices. Today we shall discuss about pollen pistol interaction. Okay. This is the pollen pistil interaction. Till now, what we have discussed. Wait a second. Okay. Till now, what we have discussed that was male reproductive organ. We have uh, discussed about male reproductive organ which produces pollen grain and female reproductive organ which produces embryo sac. In that, there is a presence of egg. Right. Then we said, how does this pollen grain is getting transferred to the stigma through pollination. And after that, we have uh, studied about outbreeding devices which help for cross pollination. Now we are talking about pollen pistil interaction. Okay, pollen pistil interaction. Now in this pollen pistil interaction, pollen and pistil, how they does they interact with each other? About that we are going to discuss. Now this is the pistil right this is the stigma and this is the pollen grain now through pollination pollen grain has reached here now that will appear something like this pollen grain now as soon as pollination takes place it doesn't guarantee that fertilization will take place okay why so because the pollen grain which has been reached to the stigma through pollination it might be of compatible Okay, it might be incompatible or it might be self incompatible. Okay, what we said during as pollen grain has been dropped on the stigma, it does not guarantee that fertilization will take place for every pollen grain which has been dropped on the stigma because of these three reasons. Okay. If that pollen grain is of compatible type, compatible means which is comfortable, okay. Now, which is comfortable, either uh, some plants they need, some stigmas they need, self pollen grain, they undergo autogamy. If it is getting self pollen grain, then only it will allow pollen grain will germinate. Uh, if it is uh, of uh, cross pollen pollen grain, if stigma wants some cross pollen, then what happens, if it is getting from the cross, po cross plant or from the different plants, then only it will allow it to germinate. For if it is getting of the desired type, then it will get compatible. Okay, then it will allow it to germinate. Incompatible. If this plant it requires cross pollen or pollen grain from some other plant, but it is getting from the cell plant, then what happens? It is incompatible for a cell pollen grain. It does not allow this pollen grain to germinate on pollen on stigma. Okay, for this we call it as incompatible. Now, in incompatible, there are one more reason might be either if it is of the same if this plant wants cross pollen, if it is getting from the self pollen, then we call it a self incompatible. Incompatible is that either it might be of a self or it from of a different species. Now, this plant is of um, we can imagine about hibiscus, okay, but it is getting pollen of fig. Two different species are this. From fig, uh, this hibiscus stigma has, pre has received a pollen from a fig plant. Whether it will get germinate, if this stigma does not allow it to germinate because it is of two, the pollen grain which has been dropped on its stigma, it is of different species, not of the same species. So, for that also we call it as incompatible. Okay, hope you understood these terms compatible, incompatible, and self incompatible. Now, stigma is going to identify, stigma plays a major role for identifying the pollen grain whether it is of a same species or of a different species whether it is a self pollen or of a cross pollen or whether it should be allowed to germinate or not that is decided by stigma okay so now this uh, when this pollen grain has been reached here now uh, that pollen grain if it starts to germinate then it will proceed with the fertilization i have got a term called as fertilization fertilization means fertilization term was given by Strasburger okay Strasburger he has given the term fertilization okay fine now 
the what interaction takes place between or the dialogue which takes place between the stigma and the pollen grain that we call it as pollen pistil interaction okay now stigma and a pollen grain both will interact with each other then only this stigma will identify that this is of a cell or a cross or of uh, other species so how it is going to identify as soon as pollen grain has been dropped on the stigma this uh, stigma will start to uh, secrete some chemicals there is a chemical dialogue chemical interaction between this uh, it has been believed that there is a secretion of sucrose by the pollen grain by the stigma so that uh, this will help it to identify it and it will help for germination of pollen grain also not only this, this uh, stigma will absorb nutrients, water and some other components from the pollen grain and it is going to identify it. And still it is under research but for time being, stigma is going to secrete some chemicals. These chemicals are responsible for, uh, for identifying the pollen grain, whether it is of self, cross or of other species. Okay. Now after this dialogue, when this stigma has under has done some screening with this pollen grain screening as we said about this whether same species or of a different species or of a self pollen or a cross pollen or it is compatible or incompatible after doing all those then one pollen grain has been reached of it is required then what happens now this is a stigma when pollen grain has been reached here and this pollen grain is of a right type so it is not of a wrong type now this pollen grain will be allow it to germinate now pollen grain will germinate something like this now for this we call it as pollen tube pollen grain will germinate on stigma forming a pollen tube now this pollen tube is formed from what it is formed from intine structure of pollen grain you should remember exine intine and there are two cells vegetative cell and a generative cell okay so pollen tube is formed from the intine layer through germ 4 pollen tube has been formed now as this pollen tube is getting formed if that pollen grain is of two cell stage hope you remember two cell stage and a three cell stage if there are two cell stage as soon as pollen tube has been formed then this generative cell will divide now generative cell will divide to form two male gametes if that pollen grain is of three cell stage in this case what happens then directly two male gametes will be released in a pollen tube two cell stage if it is pollen grain of two cell stage has been reached to the stigma after forming the pollen tube as it has been started to germinate then generative cell will divide to form two male gametes if it is of a three cell stage directly two male gametes will be released into the pollen tube okay then what happens now pollen tube starts to grow in its length right it grows in its length and reaches to what reaches to the ovule which is present here okay something like this female anatropos ovule which we have discussed earlier okay now this tube will grow in this direction and reach to where towards the micropyle end of the ovule where we have uh, shown if i show I am showing the enlarged view of this it will be something like this right now pollen tube has been reached and it will reach enter to the micropyle region okay because micropyle is that portion where integuments are absent where it is kept ovule is kept open through this now two male gametes are present inside it and now this pollen tube will try to enter inside the embryo sac now I shall draw the enlarged view of embryo sac something like this towards the micropyle and there is presence of two synergids and one egg cell is it these are two synergids and one egg cell on the other side we said three antipodals okay and central two polar nuclei which are present in a central cell is it this was structure embryo sac seven cell date nucleated embryo sac now pollen tube has been reached here right and uh, this this one what two synergids synergids consist of filiform apparatus hope you remember this there is a presence of filiform apparatus inside this synergids which are uh, helping that or guiding this pollen tube to enter inside inside the, through this micropyle okay 
now two male gametes will be released inside and fertilization takes place right so filiform haploidus here it will guide the pollen tube to enter from this direction only and reach inside and then fertilization takes place about this information you have here starts from the pollen pistil interaction from there okay this information complete what interaction is going on complete detailed information has been given here and uh, about the contents of the pollen tube and this is how it will reach to uh, that uh, synergies will guide the entry of pollen tube and this process we call as pollen pistil interaction okay this complete information you have here in your textbook here they have given the diagrams hope you can find these diagrams okay these are the pollen grains which are getting germinated and uh, this one pollen tubes growing through the style the pollen tube you can find very fine thread like structure these are the pollen tubes and uh, this structure if you see then this is the stigma you can find many of the pollen grains have germinated i have shown only one pollen grain it doesn't mean only one pollen grain will germinate as many number of pollen pollens have been dropped through pollination on stigma all will start to germinate which will reach first to the embryo sac that will fertilize the other will won't get fertilized that's it okay so all have started to germinate few have not yet germinated and you can find pollen tube is so long and it has reached to the embryo sac okay then in this structure they have shown about the vegetative nucleus and male the two male gametes are there pollen tube which consists of two male gametes and filiform apparatus has been clearly shown which is uh, helping that pollen tube to enter in this direction okay then you can find the male gametes have been released inside and they are undergoing fertilization okay that information you have here some more information i have about that i shall discuss which is not there in your textbook okay about the pollen tube okay about pollen tube pollen tube might be monosyphonous and polysyphonous it can be monosyphonous or polysyphonous <coughs> if only one pollen tube only one pollen tube forms from pollen grains okay if like this is a pollen grain if only one pollen tube is formed then we call it as monosyphonous polysyphonous means many pollen tubes from a pollen many pollen tubes can be formed from one pollen for that we call it as polysyphonous if only one pollen has been formed it is called as monosyphonous we have one more uh, information porogamy chalazogamy and mesogamy okay these three terms we are using a pollen tube as we said pollen tube will enter through the micropyle end of the ovule right if pollen tube is entering through the micropyle end we call it as porogamy if it is entering through the micropyle end okay if pollen tube enters through the micropyle end of ovule for fertilization we call it as porogamy for this example i can give it as lily okay if pollen tube is entering through the micropyle end of the uh, ovule for a fertilization we call it as porogamy chalazogamy the name itself shows chalaza if pollen tube enters through base or chalaza chalaza will be this side this is micropyle region chalaza if pollen tube is entering from this direction then we call it as chalazogamy if pollen tube for chalazogamy if pollen tube enters through chalaza of ovule we call it as chalazogamy example for this you can give it as i shall write it as here from chalaza example casuarina okay casuarina next mesogamy mesogamy if for integument if for pollen tube enters through this integument these are the integument right so if pollen tube enters in this direction either from here or from here if it enters from this uh, through the integument we call it as mesogamy through integument or funicle through integument or funicle 
example dysgraphia example dysgraphia okay if pollen tube is entering through the micropyle we call it as porogamy if it is entering through the chalazal and chalazogamy if it is entering through the uh, integument we call it as mesogamy okay so this is some information just we have talked about discussed about pollen and pistil interaction how does pollen and pistil will interact with each other because this is a major process when pistil is going to sigma is going to identify whether pollen is of same type or of a different type okay and that information you should know as i have said that information has been given in your textbook please go through that and if you wanted to see the pollen grains in the microscope you can use this method uh, like they have given some examples of this place it these pollen grains on a drop of a sugar that is you can use sucrose solution of a 10 uh, 10 percent and 15 to 30 minutes you have to leave so that in a microscope when you observe it pollen grains will start to germinate germination of a pollen grains you can find with the pollen tubes right so i shall stop here in my next video i shall discuss about artificial hybridization in detail if you have any doubts any clarifications if you want you can comment it in the comment box and uh, please do subscribe, like and share and hit the bell icon. We shall meet in the next video. Stay safe, stay healthy.